What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we finally get to see the mini chopper run. Guys, I know y'all been waiting a long time to uh, to see this chopper go down the road. Well, today we're finally going to get to do that. I do have a new engine we're going to start prepping in this video. It's the Powerland 6.5 horse electric start. I got this engine off of eBay for $130 because the Hemis, you got to do quite a bit to them and, and they really still won't work with the electric start. I'm going to state uh, why in another video, but we're not going to get into that right now on this video. So guys, let's uh, let's jump on getting this engine ready and then get the bike prepared to take it down the road and see this old hog run. to the engine was of course you see me strip it down I removed the governor tapped the top hole in the oil sensor hole then I had to remove the starter to be able to put the bolt in the old oil sensor hole so I had to pull the flywheel off I thought I turned the camera on but did not so while I had the while I had the flywheel off I went ahead and put a second charging cool so I have uh, two charging cool leads because one charging cool does three amps so now I have six amps of charging power going to my battery so I can run a little bit more accessories if I ever wanted to on this bike motor and uh, you know not drain down my battery and be able to keep it up as well as I went ahead and put a six degrees timing key advanced timing key so that'll give me a little bit more power and time everything a little bit better and I went ahead and made me a small spark plug wire with that MSD head on it as well so I ordered this Honda side cover because it's red and I like it a lot the old one is is black pretty much looks the same it just has a weird square pull starter on it um, I, I don't know I really like the red but it's a different color red than my bike if you remember my bike is more of a maroon red so I don't know which one I'm trying to decide which one to go with I don't know of course I'm not using this side cover um, I don't think on it because this big handle looks a little bit out of place so I'll probably just put if I use this and I'm going to do a round pull cover or a pull start on it so uh, I'm pretty torn over which one to use probably just going to go ahead and stick this red one on for time being because it does look pretty sweet being red so uh, I'm going to get this all done and I need to put 18 pound valve springs in this engine I have a set laying on the shelf uh, you've seen me do a video on that I'm not going to film that and uh, I'll get the uh, the side cover I need to put the gasket back on I have it sitting over here it didn't rip when I took it off and this was a brand new engine so this gaskets perfectly fine to use over again so yeah I'm gonna get the uh, the side cover bolted on the pull cord put on there and put the 18 pound valve springs in and then we can uh, get the bike ready to put this engine on so after staying up to 2 o'clock in the morning and pretty much murdering my garage there is junk everywhere I'm really close to being done with the electric start engine so what I've done is I went and bought a a little housing for an electrical outlet or a switch and then bought a 
just a block off cover and drill the electric start you know the key key ignition for it and it still needs mounted to that engine right there but the only bad thing is I, if I mount it there I won't be able to get to the screw behind this uh, behind that key switch to take the side cover off so I may move that to a different spot but I painted the valve cover and did a uh, splatter paint on it I've always liked this splatter paint look so I went with like a metallic gray on the red then I bent me up a engine plate I made this out of aluminum that goes back and bolts just like your original gas tank would and I'm running a four amp hour battery this is just an old dead battery that I had laying around but I'm gonna order the same exact battery as that have my fuse box there there's still a lot of wiring to be done by the way but then if you if you pull the engine around to the back here you will see that I put four relays there's one for the headlights uh, tail light signal in the horn and also a flasher for the uh, the signals and you can see kind of how I've wired it all there I've still there's two wires per relay that will come off one going to the the accessory like to the tail light and then one going to the switch controlling the relay and then like I said all the wires are ran up and plugged into this fuse box and I can add five more fuses to this box if I ever needed to um, and it just it all fit nice on top of that that cover how I grounded everything let me spin this on around here was I used the top bolt on the side cover and made me a I think this is eight gauge eight gauge wire and then I have this other ground I need to get me some ring terminals because um, I'm currently out of ring terminals in my wiring cord but I have another one that's going to go down and bolt up with the bolt that's bolting the engine down to the frame that way it's bolted to the engine and to the frame but yeah guys let me know what you think this will all clear the gas tank I measured everything beforehand so um, that's all perfect you know the gas tanks highest point is here so the gas tanks gonna hover above this probably about two inches and heat shouldn't be a problem I wouldn't think you know none of this should get too extremely hot I may put some uh, some rubber isolators under the battery and that fuse box you know just to keep heat away from it and how I did this was I took a piece of, of flat stock and then I welded two more pieces of flat stock and I had to bend them at a certain angle as you can see there to keep them away from the battery enough and I still got to build me some kind of a battery hold down so now I guess uh, I'm gonna try to tidy up some more of this wiring I got to solder in some some little diodes in between these wires these I put a, a, a second cool on this engine because they only come with one charging cool so I put another one and you can't just wire these together it's going to want to push power back to the other cool so you got to wire some diodes up uh, that will only let power go one direction there's a lot of wiring to this bike and and I have some more things to come that I can't really wire everything like it's going to be so uh, but I think it's looking pretty sweet so I got these ape hangers in the mail all the way from the great country of China it was like $120 if I bought them from the U.S. So, you know, we got to support our guys in China. <laughs> but, uh, so I'm going to slap these on real quick. Uh, the only thing that's going to suck is getting this grip over here off. But I'm just going to let it hang at first. So And getting the bike somewhere you can work on it. Uh, that's easy. Lay that on the, uh, the four-seater. idiot what do you think about that i want to ride this thing dude it's it sucks that i got to taste it have you shown them what uh what's new going on oh yeah Motor? yeah, yeah. You... that's part of this video actually so let me grab an allen wrench and i'll get these handlebars swapped out cool so surprisingly these have blue loctite on them from the factory Come on, baby. Oh, gosh. But I uh, got one little clamper namper off there. See, Lonnie may not have to buy ape hangers because his bike had the the raised handlebars. And I like the style handlebars. I mean, do you think you're going to keep them? What? Your, the handlebars you have because they're going to be at least this high, much higher. And you can buy risers for this as well. I think I have a set you can have. What do you think? I don't know. I have to see it first. So, uh, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna lay these handlebars in my seat because I don't feel like pulling the throttle off at this exact point in time. Now I'm getting excited. For sure. What's the thing? Come undone. Slap the ground. What do you think? Ugliest thing you ever seen in your life? It's pretty sweet. Kind of ugly. How dare you? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get these put on and we'll show you the final result. What are you doing there, Greg? Gotta file out this Chinese uh, metal. So I didn't get to show y'all this. Basically, these mirrors had a bolt that went through them and separates these pieces of aluminum inside the handlebars. Well, I wanted these handle grips with this billet end on the end of them. And I could not find a flush mount allen head long enough so i had to weld two together can they see it oh yeah <laughs> and uh, it worked great though uh that goes to show you you can do it you know but now i gotta separate all these layers because uh it won't fit down in there i'll separate it out like that so that's what we're in the process of doing now and then go through the tedious process of getting that grip off that handlebar because she's I mean people's probably taking grips off for her they suck sometimes and I should be able to knock each layer out like so what came in the mail today this is uh, the brake kit that Lonnie has bought now this is a really small rotor I think this is like well it says right there 160 millimeter I got a 203 millimeter on my chopper because you really want as big as possible when you're running these mechanical bicycle brakes uh, here's what they look like link will be in the description below where you can get these on Amazon so uh, basically one set's mine, one is Lonnie's. I'm not gonna use the disc. And I also bought some Shimano standard brake cable lines. So hopefully if we can get this thing mounted on the bike today, then we should be able to ride it. I also ordered from China because it was so much cheaper. Uh, people ask me how I use those pit bike mufflers all the time. This is uh, basically what I buy. This is a one inch to one and a half inch little flange made out of stainless steel this is for like sewer pipes but it's perfect for exhaust number one because it's stainless steel it's the perfect thickness and it fits really snug in the end of those pit bike mufflers and this is the same diameter as the pipe that's on predators uh one inch so i bought a few extras of those just to have uh, actually two of them are for the 670 and then i'll have two spares and i'm probably going to go ahead and uh, order, you know, I think these are like five bucks on eBay if you buy them from China. If you buy them from America, they're like $15, and I'm sure they're imported from China. So let's get this brake uh, mounted on the bike. This is the original brake handle off of this bike. I thought it was a two piece type deal that I could pretty much unbolt this and then lay it on, bolt the, the second piece up. It actually has to slide on. Now, big problem with that because uh, I'm gonna have to pull, not a big problem, I'm just gonna have to pull this whole throttle assembly off and these mirrors, which the mirrors suck to get, get the uh, ends out. And it's okay, we're gonna have to do it to slide this on, you know, and set it right there because uh, I want it to be on this side. So I guess that's what I'm gonna do. Gotta find what size this was. And that looks like it was it. I didn't really tighten these down as much as uh, as I normally do. I usually crank these puppies down. So when I took these off the first time out of the original bars, 
it was rough, but oh yeah, what do you think of the headlight? I didn't even show y'all that I mounted the headlight. It's just tack welded on, but it's good enough to hold. Uh, there will be something different with these forks. I got pit back forks as I've explained in other videos. Um, oh yeah, I actually don't have to remove. Okay, so this is actually gonna be a lot easier than I was uh, thinking. And I have that new electric start motor, but we're not gonna put it on. We're not gonna put it on right now, right meow, because uh, we have other stuff to do. So now, that is the one downside to this thing being up here, is it's so high off the ground. And it's hard to reach the higher stuff. Do you, uh, you guys notice somebody in here? Lonnie. Okay, so we got that slit on there all into place. I wanted it on this side because later I will uh, do, I have new grips coming, uh, or new brakes, but I actually like that one a lot. I couldn't remember what it looked like. There is one bad thing that just happened. The little piece just threads onto fell inside the handlebars. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to fish that mother out. Looks like I'm unclamping the tire and going to lean the bike over. Whew. Got it. So basically I had to, I dropped this down inside the handlebars and I had to lean it over to get it out. But you can see I have to put a four by four in between the wheel. Uh, to really clamp this front down. I'm telling you this stand though, this motorcycle lift was the best investment I have ever made. So there's a little bit of play in this throttle and it doesn't want to return like it did before. Which is weird, but there's still a little bit of fine adjustments I can make like the gap in between the actual grip right here in the uh, throttle assembly, so I'm gonna kind of pry that out. See how it's slow to return. Okay, so you can see that this brake will set right in this area, and I may, looking at it just then, it actually, it actually may work with less modification as I thought. You take this, you know, it's got this outer bracket um, for the bicycle with some spacers in between it and stuff. So I'm going to pull all that out To see you know how I can mount this so now I've been looking at this and the way I think I'm going to do it once I can get this these brakes separated enough to There we go Okay So that's kind of the way I'm probably going to to try to mount this. What I'm going to do is maybe come up from this point and uh, bolt on and from right here. I'm just trying to mount this where, you know, the cable pulls this way on this actuator. So I kind of want it going, the cable will come in, come into this end and then pull this actuator back to tighten up the, the little caliper. So I'm just trying to put it in a place where my cable can come in nicely. And it looks like, like that would be the case. So this is how it turned out. I haven't welded it in place yet, but I'm about to tack it. You can see I just took a piece of flat stock and wedge cut it, then put uh, drilled two holes in it and bolted it up to the caliper bracket. And it looks really nice. It's sitting in the perfect spot. Then I took a business card on each side of the, the brake pads and put in between the rotor and the pads just to keep this centered really well and i also put a thin strip of cardboard up in the top of this caliper to keep it spaced up off of the caliper i don't want it ride or off of the rotor i don't want the caliper riding down onto the rotor and you know grinding a, a big lip up in there so i'm gonna get to tacking this into place and you know i'm only gonna weld little bits at a time because i don't want too much heat on this so uh, i'll get to tacking it and weld this out and we should be able to run our brake cable
So skip forward a little bit. I went ahead and mounted that caliper on. It's on there really nice and I went and made me that brake line. I'll do a video later showing you how to make your own bicycle brake lines on uh, Lonnie's chopper. But everything's hooked up. The throttle's a little bit janky, so uh, you got to return it with your hand. I don't know what the deal is with that, but we'll have to address that later. I think it's the cable. But uh, now I'm going to get this down and ride down the driveway and see how it, how it runs. I'm giving it like maybe I don't know half throttle not even and it runs really good I think it's a uh, it's about time for a road test we do need to tighten the chain before our next ride this will probably stress the chain some we need to move that engine back goodness I wish I had foot pegs that's for sure even like we said, even these up here would be perfect for right now because it was right there. So Lonnie is currently hardballing it. No helmet. <laughs> Probably needs a helmet. I have my helmet. Think of it tricky tray no oh, you almost you might have me convinced now <laughs> i don't know we'll see it should run with the way it's geared Get that van back the there. thing should run like 60 or 70 so we'll see Yeah, no foot pegs and he said the brakes doesn't work great <laughs> they need adjusted uh, so uh, look he could have died there's a banana peel <laughs> Lonnie could have died there's a fresh banana peel on the road good gosh someone's been playing Mario Kart out here I'm just waiting for the chain to snap bind up flip him over the handlebars Yeah, it needs the McCoonie needs tune for sure. It's it's gonna be mean though. I wouldn't get all the way on it. It's sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said, man. When you took off, you're going off. Well, it's it's right foot on. pegs bad. It's hard to hold your feet like this. My my abs got a good workout. <laughs> yeah, holding your legs up. Oh man, it's mean. You want to ride it? Yeah.
<laughs> yeah, the foot peg is the biggest thing. It's hard to balance yourself just holding your legs up. It gets so swirly is this front tire so skinny yeah you do one little lean and it gets it gets wavy with you it's gonna be nice with the motorcycle wheels on it i need to rig up a way to adjust the back tire kind of like motorcycles do it's like a washer with the threaded part onto it but we got to see it go i wish i brought my gopro all right i don't want to ride it down the driveway <laughs> Do you <laughs> the brakes work better than I thought they was going to? I mean, they'll stop you, That's but it's I'm just like about. he said. He said they're not no stop on a dime brakes, you know. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Hog life. So I guess that's it for today. My allergies are swelling my eyes up. We finally got to see it run. it makes me so happy you know it's been a long journey but <laughs> you can see it there <laughs> So guys, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. The thing flies it. I mean, you can be rolling 35, 40 mile an hour and just give it more gas and absolutely take off like you was standing still. So I don't think this bike has any problem going 60 mile an hour with the sprocket set up. We do gotta tighten the chain and all that good jazz, but we do have to change that engine out with a new electric start motor and tune on that Makuni a little bit because it did want to spit under load with you. So we need to get the air fuel ratios right and get that new engine, you know, installed on there. I got a little thing I'm going to do to be able to tighten the chain up. So um, I'll show you how I'm going to do all that on the next video. Like I've stated, there will be new forks for this bike and a new triple clamp, new wheels. But as of right now, I just want to get it rolling down the road to see the way it handled and how much power it has. And it's got plenty of power, trust me. So guys, don't forget to go to Go Power Sports and uh, use that discount code REDBEARDS to save 10% on all your go-kart needs. They supplied a lot of stuff for this uh, bike. They supplied the Makuni, the uh, engine, the engine plate. We got a lot of stuff that we used on this bike from them. And check out those Amazon links in the description below if you see anything you like. Uh, we have the handlebars on there, the headlight, all kinds of stuff. You can uh, use those links and it does help out the channel and helps me to continue doing these awesome builds for you guys. 
Also, remember, we'll be in Keller, Texas on the 22nd at Go Power Sports for their grand opening and swap meet. Uh, there'll be a lot of other people there. Go Kart Alley, Kart Fab, Cards and Cameras. So come down and have a good time with us. Uh, I'll be giving out some stickers. I'm sure some other places, uh, other channels will be doing the same as well. But come down and hang out with us. I'm sure you'll have a good time. Make sure to like and follow us on Instagram and Facebook where you'll get to see pictures of this stuff before it comes out on the channels, guys. And uh, thank you for supporting us. We just hit 15,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you enough. Um, it's been a, been a long road, a lot of work, but it's worth it to give you guys some awesome content. And there's a lot more coming when we get back from Texas. we got some huge things happening, so guys, stay tuned and always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.